Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's call with LNI Secretary Jerry Oleksiak and UC Benefits Policy Director Susan Dickinson. I'm Teresa Elliott, Deputy Communications Director for LNI. Please submit your questions by clicking the chat icon located in the lower right hand side of your screen. Please include your name and media outlet. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's call with LNI Secretary Jerry Oleksiak and UC Benefits Policy Director Susan Dickinson. I'm Teresa Elliott, Deputy Communications Director for LNI. Please submit your questions by clicking the chat icon located in the lower right hand side of your screen. Please include your name and media outlet followed by your question. In the interest of time, you'll be limited to one question, but time permitting, we'll open up the call for a second round followed by your question. In the interest of time, you'll be limited to one question, but time permitting, we'll open up the call for a second round. You may submit any follow-up questions to us at dlipress at pa.gov and we'll address them after the call. For your awareness, this call is being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please hang up now. Following the call, a link to the recording will be provided to the media outlets that participated today. You may submit any follow-up questions to us at dlipress at pa.gov and we'll address them after the call. For your awareness, this call is being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please hang up now. Following the call, a link to the recording will be provided to the media outlets that participated today. We'll get started with comments from Secretary Jerry Oleksiak. Secretary? Thank you, Teresa, and, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you being here. We start with the numbers. Since March 15th, we have paid more than $29.5 billion with a B in unemployment uh, benefits, $5.6 billion from our regular uh, unemployment compensation system, and the remainder, uh, the $24 billion, through uh, the uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, the uh, Pandemic. We'll get started with comments from Secretary Jerry Oleksiak. Secretary? Thank you, Teresa, and, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you being here. We start with the numbers. Since March 15th, we have paid more than $29.5 billion with a B in unemployment uh, benefits, $5.6 billion from our regular uh, unemployment compensation system and the remainder. Uh, the 24 billion through uh, the uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, the uh, pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, the state and federal extended benefits program, and the Lost Wages Act. We have also, since March 15th, uh, in a, our continuing efforts to uh, improve our customer service and reach as many as our customers and claimants as possible, have um, increased our staff by 158% at this point. Uh, more than double emergency unemployment compensation, the state and federal extended benefits program, and the Lost Wages Act. We have also, since March 15th, uh, in a, our continuing efforts to uh, improve our customer service and reach as many as our customers and claimants as possible, have um, increased our staff by 158% at this point, uh, more than double, obviously, gone from 775 employees to a current total of just under 2,000. Well, obviously gone from 775 employees to a current total of just under 2,000, 1,998. And thus far we've worked 358,392 overtime hours in our UC uh, service centers. Uh, so again, close to 360,000 hours of overtime since March 15th. 97% uh, of our eligible claimants who filed for regular unemployment compensation between March 15th and 1,998. And thus far, we've worked 358,392 overtime hours in our UC uh, service centers. Uh, so again, close to 360,000 hours of overtime since March 15th. 97% uh, of our eligible claimants who filed for regular unemployment compensation between March 15th and September 12th were either paid or were deemed not eligible for benefits September 12th, were either paid or were deemed not eligible for benefits, and the remaining 3% are cases that are still awaiting resolution. That 97% of 
figure has been constant, but what's shifted is the weeks moving forward. So uh, we've been uh, pretty steady at that number. Since March 15th, we've helped over 2 million uh, claimants through our uh, communication system, more than 1.3 million through email, 633,000 by phone, 169,000 by live chat, and 801,000 through our virtual assistant. And uh, those numbers continue to, to improve. Uh, we're doing everything we can to ensure that improvement. And as we've said from the very beginning, we, we take our work and, and our uh, obligation to our fellow citizens very seriously. And we wanna do all we can to make sure that people who are entitled to their benefits get them. Uh, let me remind everyone again about the Lost Wages Assistance Program. That's the extra $300 per week. If uh, eligible folks have not yet applied, they should do so. Uh, the week ending September 5th was the final week of uh, that payments will be made, and L and I will continue to make retroactive payments for claims from the week of August 1st through September 5th for the foreseeable future, as long as uh, those uh, that federal grant um, remains in place. Uh, we don't expect any additional uh, federal funding. So again, we're urging anyone who is partially or fully unemployed due to COVID-19 and has not yet applied for those benefits to apply now at uc.pa.gov slash cert. Some updates on the UC Trust Fund, the balance as of last Friday, October 16th, was just under 40 million, $39,707,200, excuse me, 39 million, $707,200. And this is from the US Treasury uh, website. Uh, we have uh, paid nearly uh, 5.8 billion, as we said, through the uh, trust fund, and we have begun borrowing uh, interest-free loans. So far as of today, we have borrowed $450.5 million in zero interest loans, and we uh, will continue to uh, borrow through that system uh, as long as we uh, have the uh, pandemic uh, crisis going on. Um, we are, will be, uh, holding our um, 21st town hall this Thursday, October 22nd at 1 p.m. And we encourage members of the public to join us at access.live slash PA labor to be a part of that call. And uh, we continue, as you know, fighting PUA fraud. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we've taken a lot of measures to fight this, uh, not just Pennsylvania, a scourge, but uh, uh, an epidemic of fraud throughout the country. Uh, our new identity verification vendor, IDME, has begun contacting PUA claimants to assist them assist them with confirming their identities. We uh, contracted with, with uh, IDME to provide this additional uh, vetting of um, uh, claims after a surge in su suspicious claims was detected in late September. Fortunately, that surge has receded significantly. Claimants who are contacted by IDME should follow the directions given to verify their identities so their payments can be released. And they are released pretty quickly after their identity is verified. This new layer of identity verification will help ensure that PUA payments are going to the folks who need them or fellow citizens who need them and not into the pockets of fraudsters. Only new applicants, new PUA applicants, will need to verify their identities. <clears throat> Excuse me, no other unemployment benefits have been impacted. We continue to monitor the claims for fraud and we continue to work with law enforcement partners to bring the uh, fraudsters to justice. This is an ongoing criminal investigation. So we are taking this very seriously as are our federal, state and local partners. Uh, note of caution, we know some pool claimants have gone directly to IDME uh, their website, IDME's website, to sign up before they receive communications uh, to do so on their dashboard. We want to advise against this to help prevent claimants from falling prey to potential phishing scams. Um, and that's when a scammer collects your personal information under the guise of a legitimate company. The safest option is to wait until the invite appears on your dashboard. And as the system, as we continue to work with that system, uh, they're improving their uh, the numbers, and Susan can talk about that um, in a little more detail. Uh, we continue to encourage people to go to our website, uc.pa.gov 
slash fraud to find a list of uh, scam warning signs to find details on how to report fraud if you think you have been victim uh, victimized by that and what to do to um, return any claim any uh, funds that you may have received um, with that i'm going to turn it over to susan and then we will take questions susan thank you uh, one note that i wanted to make about id me um, and the individuals who do successfully go through the ID me verification process is that they will not necessarily receive payment if there's some other issue on their claim. Uh, that is one uh, you know point point of information that I think it's important for people to know. We certainly need their identity verified if we're sending them a message in their dashboard. Um, but the uh, identity may not be the only issue happening on their claim in which case they would not receive payment right away until the other issue is resolved. Uh, we do have a note about this on the landing page that we give to people uh, when we send the message in their dashboard. Uh, there's a link that they click on. It takes them to another page uh, through IDME's website. Um, and it does have this information, but I wanna make sure that individuals understand, you know, payment will not be uh, instant, you know, if, if there is something else happening. And in a lot of cases there is. so. Uh, you know, that's just one point of clarification. Generally, individuals will receive a notice from us the following day after they successfully use IDME. Uh, we'll send them a dashboard message that says you've been successfully verified. And at that point, uh, if, if there is a payment due, the payment will be made overnight. Um, but if there is something else that needs to be looked into, that goes through our normal fact-finding and adjudication process. Um, and that's all I wanted to share so we can move on to the questions. Okay, thank you for those comments, Susan. And we now move on to the Q&A portion of today's call. Again, if you have any questions for Susan or Secretary Alexia, please submit them at this time using the chat icon located at the bottom left corner of your screen. Please be sure to include your name as well as your media outlet along with your question. First on deck today, we have Joe Napsha from the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. How much of the pool of funds remain for the state to distribute? And do you believe it will be sufficient for all of the claimants? There we go. Uh, I'll, I'll start and then uh, Susan, you can jump in. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll go first. The, uh, the program ends the uh, end of December uh, and it's federal dollars. So we anticipate that uh, those dollars will, uh, will be there unless the federal government makes any changes. Uh, Susan, do you have any anything to add? Right. I, I was going to say, I, I was wondering if there might have been a, a mix up with programs. Maybe not. Um, the, the PUA program, as the secretary said, is federal dollars. So what we do is, is we draw down the money that we need um, as we go. So it's not as if Pennsylvania was allotted a certain amount. Uh, we just report you know, to the feds, this is how much we need to make the payments from last night. And then we can draw, the comptroller draws them down. So we always have uh, what we need for PUA. Um, I was wondering if, if maybe it was an LWA question since that's the one that is limited, um, but we do still have plenty of LWA funds and so far that program is continuing. We're allowed to continue making retroactive payments. Um, as the secretary mentioned in his opening remarks, it is uh, encouraged that if individuals on UC, PEUC or EB have not applied for LWA yet uh, for the weeks in August and the final week uh, being the week of September 5th, um, that they should apply uh, as soon as they can, and then we'll be sure to make those payments as soon as their regular benefits are distributed. Next, the Altoona Mayor's Bill Kibler asks, how does the vendor confirm PUA applicant's identity? So the ID Me uh, company, and they do have a website out there if you wanted to go see it. As a matter of fact, if you just type in id.me, it comes right up. Um, <laughs> I found that out the other day. So um, anyway, the IDME company, um, they verify identities a couple of different ways, and they actually give the, the user the option of which way they want to do it. They can either ask personal questions, rather they can answer personal questions that will be asked of them, um, or they can uh, use documentation if they have you know, a passport, uh, uh, some sort of a state ID, et cetera. Um, or there is also the trusted referee process. Uh, this process is also kind of a, a last resort. If you fail, you know, say you choose to answer personal questions and, and you uh, fail the questions, uh, it will direct everyone to the trusted referee process. 
which is an on-camera uh, interview with an actual uh, staff member of theirs. So their staff member, uh, you know, will will have you, um, you know, ahead of time. You actually do upload some documentation, and then the staff member talks to them, uh, you know, ask them questions. It's a, a fairly brief process, from what I've heard. So, uh, you know, once they have successfully been verified, uh, it's just like being verified through one of the other methods. Uh, and then, you know, Pennsylvania will receive that information and will be able to release uh, release the hold for uh, the identity purposes on their claim. Okay, next, Michaela Dillipak from ABC 27 wants to know, how did today's hearing go? Representative Kate Clark said she thought it went well. What are you all planning to do to get benefits out faster and to more people? Uh, I was part of the hearing. We just ended uh, right at 11 o'clock, a little after 11. Uh, I think Representative Kate Clunk, maybe, who, who you're referring to, uh, uh, who uh, made that comment. Um, I thought it went well also. We, uh, it's the fourth time we have uh, testified before the House Labor and Industry Committee since um, the pandemic began. Uh, it, it is, it, you know, we have said from the very beginning, we want to be as transparent as we possibly can be with uh, the media, with the legislature and with our claimants and that. So we, we have uh, appeared every time we've been asked to appear. Um, at the hearing, we talked about some of the things that we've been doing, some that I, I've shared with you. We've more than doubled our staff at the UC Service Center, going up to 2000, uh, 2000 people now. We have, um, uh, contracted with outside vendors who will help with the uh, um, appeals process and working with our examiners. Uh, um, we've had the support of our uh, collectively bargained uh, um, members of our staff uh, throughout the pandemic, throughout all of this, but particularly with bringing in outside vendors. We have been able to um, accelerate bringing in people into the service center itself because of uh, safety measures that we have taken. We have uh, made significant IT investments through with Google AI, the uh, artificial intelligence. Um, our, our bots are now answering, are able to answer 450 frequently asked questions, and that's getting better all the time. And we have a, about a 95% success rate with that. Uh, we've also made some investments in our, our hardware. We're getting um, uh, more secure and stable connections, more stable connections to our folks working at home. They have been secure, but the stability uh, and the, you know, the connectivity hasn't always been what we would like. So we have made some improvements there. We have gotten more uh, laptops and monitors out to people. Uh, we've increased bandwidth. Um, so we have we have uh, done quite a bit. And then obviously, as we've talked, um, working with IDME. Uh, to uh, increase the speed that, that we are able to uh, uh, release um, claims that uh, could have been red flagged. We're working with our vendor who are doing some things on the front end of that as well. And, um, you know, all of it together, in, including the uh, incredible commitment of our staff is, is helping to get things out as quickly as we possibly can. But we are, are uh, we, we just got a, uh, uh, an independent review of our uh, uh, personnel, our, our staffing situation that we are reviewing to see what, if anything, we can do. We're working with the governor's office to see what we may be able to do to increase staff. So it is a never ending process and it's something that we will continue working on until we have reached every claimant that we need to, to reach. Susan, I don't know if you wanna add anything to that. Uh, no, I think that covers it all. Joe Chevalier from Bucks County Courier Times wants to know, how many people has ID me confirmed so far? And what percentage is this of the 117,000 with delayed payments? So we'll probably have better stats next week only because uh, we've only been at it for a little over a week. Uh, we did receive a first weekly report from ID me, but the way that they do their reporting is they they assume people will have up to a week in order to file. Um, so really, our weekly report only included one day. <laughs> if you follow follow that that logic, um, so uh, by the end of this week, we should actually have at least a full week's of, uh, worth of data then, and be able to see uh, you know how many have actually successfully verified 
um, and, you know, see some of those stats and, and figure out, you know, how, how it's going and how many people are being able to use it successfully. Next, Lauren Rosenblatt from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette has a fraud-related question. Why does going directly to the ID me site rather than waiting for the invitation on their dashboard open up claimants to what sounds like more fraud? That could be because they're not uh, necessarily using a link that we provide. So if they're using a link that someone else provided, that means they're trusting that that other person provided a good factual link, uh, which could not be the case. They may have provided them some other link to try to get their identification information as well. Remember, anyone who's going through this process, uh, not everyone, but most people haven't been through the ID me process. So they don't know what to expect. And if they get to a website that's asking them for information, they may not, you know, realize that they shouldn't be putting in certain things um, that it might not be a legitimate website. So that's why it's safest to go into their dashboard, uh, you know, which they're already signed up for, they know it's us, it's, it's their dashboard that they manage their claim through. Um, and then just click on the link from the dashboard, that way you know you're getting to the right page, you're getting the right link. It looks like we're entering our second round of questions, so I encourage any of today's participants to have additional questions to please submit them at this time. Next, we have Bill Kibler from the Altoona Mirror. Would you expect PUA to be renewed? Um, that's a great question. I wouldn't know what to expect from uh, uh, Congress. Uh, you know, there's a big event in a couple of weeks that uh, most of the uh, people in Congress are are focused on. Uh, whether there could be some kind of an agreement between now and then, I don't know. Uh, whether there could be something in a lame duck session, a lame duck session, I don't know. Um, so there, there are just too many variables to predict that. Uh, uh, clearly, we would love to see uh, things extended. Uh, people need these benefits, but um, that's a, a question better asked of uh, your uh, um, representatives in Congress. Next, we have Lauren Rosenblatt from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. You said earlier that we've gotten through 97% of claims for regular unemployment. What percent of PUA claims have you processed so far? For PUA, it's a little bit of a different situation only because uh, we expect that a lot of them are fraudulent, so it really is hard to say. Uh, we don't, uh, you know, we can, can, you know, know how many people are calling us, know how many claims are, are taken, um, but to know how many are still waiting for uh, some sort of action, um, some of it may, well, actually most of it is identification uh, verification. Um, and there's no telling how much uh, people will actually try to go in because if it's a fraudulent claim, clearly, you know, no one's going to even be attempting to use IDME. They're probably long gone. Um, we may have some fraudulent attempts at using IDME. So once we're able to get more claims through IDME, that'll probably give us a better picture of how many claims are, are truly, um, you know, real claimants waiting for something. Um, and, you know, how many of them are fraudulent. Of course, you know, as, as time goes on, we still have, you know, more staff all the time that we're adding to help with the pool of claims with the, with the legitimate issues. There are, you know, uh, eligibility issues, things like that, that we have to look into. That's part of the regular system. Uh, you know, the, the system is a more modern system where it automatically assigns tasks to staff to work on. So, you know, those are, are going through normally. Um, but when it comes to the overall picture, like looking at a percentage, we would have to kind of have a better breakout of how many are legitimate, how many aren't, and IDME will help us, uh, you know, see that more clearly. Michaela Draypack from ABC 27 says, we had someone reach out to us saying her benefits stopped for about two months because she had simply answered a question wrong, but no one from the department reached out to her. Do we have checks and balances in place for that? Yes, when uh, a person says something on an, an initial application where it raises an eligibility issue, um, the system then sends it to an, an interviewer, which is uh, like a first line staff type person. Um, if there's any action that they can take, they will, but it may just then have to go to an examiner um, and the claims examiner then has to reach out to the person and ask questions. Um, so two months is actually not a, a long um, time. Normally, like before the pandemic, 
two months might be the right time. It probably wouldn't take any longer than that to hear from someone. Just because of the volume, uh, it may take a little longer now. Um, although the volume has, has decreased throughout the year, so you know we're catching up on things better. But uh, you know that this could be around the time that they hear from someone two to three months or so, uh, just to to get the facts. And once the examiner um, gathers the facts on a case, generally the uh, issue is then decided. Uh, you know, within about three weeks or so. Um, that's just per our federal guidance, our standards that we have to meet. It's a 21-day standard, so. Um, you know, they should be getting some info out there soon. Um, and then, you know, once they've given us all the information that we need, um, it's then just up to the examiner to make the decision. The only thing that could delay it anymore is if there's another party involved, uh, such as an employer that they separated from, the examiner may have to go back and forth between the parties multiple times before they can come to a conclusion. Uh, because as long as the parties are disagreeing on what happened, you have to then kind of dig in uh, and investigate and see what the real story is. So uh, that's, those are usually the ones that take the longest. Um, you know, other issues uh, don't typically take as long, but they could still take, you know, as, as we're saying, two months or so uh, to even get the questions just because there is, you know, such a high volume of claims right now. Okay, and that looks like that is all of our questions for today. Secretary Alexiak or Susan, do you have any last thoughts before we exit the call this afternoon? We appreciate you being with us. Thank you. And we will uh, uh, continue this as, uh, as long as we are <clears throat> facing the situation that we're facing. So thank you. Thank you.